Welcome to Physical Pharmacy Simplified by Kenya Pharma Mentor, where physical pharmacy is classified into five categories. Mainly the solution, that is the physiochemical properties, which involves the solution and the solubility factors affecting various drugs and excipients. Number two, in physical pharmacy, we are reflecting on the micrometrics, which is the study and science and technology of small particles. Number three is a study of the dispersions, which the dispersions include the emulsion, suspension, and the colloids. Number four is the rheology, which is the study of flow of fluid. And number five is the kinetics. Why is it important for us to understand about the about these elements? Why is it important for us to understand the physical properties of a drug or an excipient used in the pharmaceutical industry while preparing the dosage forms? It is important, for example, to study the uh, physical structure, that is the shape and the way that the drug and excipients appear. Because, for instance, when you have a mopus and a crystalline solid particles, they have an effect on solubility, where amorphous, we know they are very soluble and they, are, they tend to have more solubility as compared to crystalline substance. So it is very important to understand also about the physical size and physical properties and, and uh, the size of a particle so as to understand the effect of the bioavailability of the drug. Because we know that there is a way in which the particle size influences the bioavailability, where, smaller, where the smaller the particle size, the greater the rate of the solution. And greater the rate of the solution means there is great rate of absorption and there is great effect, therapeutic effect in, the, in return. Now, we also need to understand about the particle size. For instance, because production of solid dosage forms, that is when you feel using, when you feel equal volume of capsule, capsule using different size of particles, you realize that that capsule at which you feel using the large particles will feel very fast and would, while the other one would require more particles so as to feel when you are using small counted particles. Also, particle size influence physical stability of suspension, where large, uh, suspe large particles tend to settle down. So it is very important to understand about the micrometrics and about these physical properties so as to make sure we are pro preparing what is going to result into the desired therapeutic action. Even to the topical uh, drugs, ointments, and gels, it is also important to understand about their properties so as to make sure they don't cause an effect which is a problematic to the skin. Now, uh, there are some things in which it is important for us to know and understand before we proceed further, like the polymorphs, polymorphic hydrate, and so the polymorphic hydrates. When you talk, polymorphs refers to crystal with identical chemical characteristics, but exist in more than one form. In other words, it could be isomers, but the best word here is polymorphs because they are crystals. Uh, the other one is polymor polymorphic hydrate, which contain water, which forms part of the covalent bond, while the sort of polymorphic hydrates contain water but do not form a part of the pond within the particle size on flowability. Larger the size of particle, greater the flowability, and smaller the particle size, lesser the flowability. Effect of the particle shape on flowability. Rounded or spherical shape has more flowability as compared to the rough and also the other types of shapes, regular shapes or rectangular shapes. We come to the next property, a physical property of these uh, drugs, the density of borders, which in density we all know that it is mass by uniform, but we have to understand about the bulk density, true density, tough density, and cranial density. Now, on this, we have to understand about the two types of gaps which are present in substance when 
the tamani all these densities and that two types include the interpartical spaces and interpartical spaces when you talk of interpartical spaces it refers to voids which these are spaces between the particles while intra means it is the spaces within so make sure to mention intra as within and inter as between so that the key term there is within and the other one is between now on bulk density it is the mass as obvious all densities you say mass or volume but the volume differs now on bulk density we use the bulk volume with the bulk volume include the volume of the solid the volume of the interparticle and the volume of intraparticle i hope the point is clear on the two density we are using the exact volume of the particle only without the voids and without the intraparticle scalps that density refers to that which is obtained by tapping the border cups and the interparticle cups are minimized so on this that density or that volume is almost the almost the true full uh, true volume or true density so when that properly it may look almost the same cranial density refers to that density obtained when two or more particles are combined together now on determination of density of uh, various borders, we have two methods. That is the direct method and indirect method. Direct method can be easily done in the laboratory, while indirect method includes methods such as liquid displacement method, the gas displacement method. We have the factors affecting the bulk density or factors affecting the density in general. We have the particle size. Particle size is directly proportional to bulk density. It means increase in particle size, the bulk density increases. Uh, particle shape. So spherical particles have lighter surface area compared to other to mass fission, and hence have light surface exposed. Number three is the particle size distribution. And number four is the surface property. We come to the next phenomena about the porosity, which porosity is defined as the ratio of full void volume to bulk volume. So there are several formulas of ending porosity, but it is very important to understand that it is the void volume divided by the bulk volume. We express in terms of volume, in terms of density, in terms of... Now we move to packing geometry being another property. Now, if particles are monocyst and spherical and of the same, the, the way they are packed matters a lot. When they are rhombic, they have different properties and solubility as compared to when they are packed on a cubic form. So when they are packed in a rhombic form, they have a porosity of 26%. So it's less porous when it is packed on a rhombic form other than when it is packed on a open packing. Now, there are some factors affecting porosity, which is including the particle shape and texture, particle size, particle size distribution. So larger the particle size, lesser the additive and cohesive force and greater the flow and lesser the chances of intra, intra entrapment of air and interparticle volume would decrease and vice versa. The spherical has a lesser porosity as compared to the cubicle. Cubes, cube, cube shape have more porosity, slightly, slightly more porosity as compared to the other. So the particle size distribution, wide range of particles or in the particle cups filled with by smaller particles, whereas in the same range of particles, the interparticle cups are not filled. Now, surface property. On surface property, moving particles may develop electrostatic forces of attraction in a container and may join together. In this case, porosity will be reduced, whereas flowing particles, forces, cohesion and addition forces increased and may entrap air in between them. And on this case, porosity will be increased. So moving particles develop electrostatic. Now, the next property we are going to focus is the flowability of borders. Now, flowability of borders means that ability of flood borders to flow 
or to move when stuck together on a hip or what are the chances of orders being blown away. Now there are methods of determining the, the flowability of a border and they are, these methods include the five methods, which is the compression compressibility index, which is known as the car index, our senior ratio, angle of repose, flow rate, true orifice, and shear cell. To begin with is the compression index, which is also known as the CARS index. Now this one is just the difference between the bulk volume and the true volume, which can be According to CARS index, the formula is CARS index is equals to the acetyl apparent volume minus the tapped volume over the apparent volume times 100. It's in general as an inverse proportion to flowability. It means uh, lesser, the flow, lesser, the, lesser the current index, more the flowability. In the ratio is the bulk volume divided by top volume, which is simply uh, a division direct is a ratio. So lesser the difference or lesser the difference, it means the smaller the ratio. And once the smaller the ratio, it means there is increase in flowability. Now, on the angle of repose as a method of determining the flowability, we understand that angle of repose is the angle of, of inclination formed between the uh, slopeness of the borders and that of the surface, which is the horizontal surface containing the, containing the borders. Now, from this angle of repose, more the angle of inclination, greater the force of gravity and lesser will be the attractiveness of the borders by the effect of cohesion and attention and hence it will be easily flow it will be easily flown away then it means more the angle of inclination more the flowability ways there are some two methods of determining the angle of repose and these techniques include the fixed height and the fixed test method the fixed height in involves fixing the the height to two centimeters below the tip of the funnel while on the fixed pace, we fix the pace by bringing in as a container or a holding material that has a fixed pace. On the other side, when we are holding on the fixed side, we leave the pace freely. We could hold the borders in a maybe a plain paper or a table. But while using the fixed pace, we can bring in a petri dish or a container adhesiveness of borders where the cohesive borders are formed several angle of inclination are formed because when they form they can they, because they are cohesive they can form a huge hip which this huge hip can break and when it breaks it forms several other angle of inclination so for cohesive substances they have multiple angle of inclination now factors affecting angle of repose include the particle shape and texture particle size particle density and surface property. So these ones are the factors which repeat itself over and over again, where we say the spherical shape particle surface, lesser surface area and contact area during the flow, which increases the flowability. And lesser will be the angle of repose for the spherical substance. Well, the middle and flex and tended like particles have more surface area to full depression, which produces more flow, lesser flow, more friction and lesser flowability. Particle size, larger the particle size, lesser the surface area and lesser the friction and greater the flowability. Yeah, this one is what understanding. And number three, the particle density. Greater the density, greater the flow and greater the gravitational force, meaning there will be lesser angle of repose because the substance flow because of the effect of gravitational and vice versa is true. Surface property, when particles are flowing, electrostatic forces of attraction may develop. Now from this, the cohesion and addition forces may increase, then the flow characteristic is decreased and the angle of repose for that case is increased because of the surface properties caused by the electrostatic forces. Now, the probability can be altered by decrease or increase. Now, by use of uh, Glidants or aerosols, flowability of particles can be increased. And on the other end, 
the flowability also can be increased to a point whereby it is the glidants are in excess. When the glidants are in excess, the flowability will start decreasing because the glidant will be in excess and it will cover the whole entire part of the particle entering its movement and flowability will be decreased also. In as much as the glidants were, they are applied at first to increase the flowability. Now, particle size determination. We've illustrated why is it important to identify the particle size um, and why do we determine and analyze these particle sizes. Is that these particle size influence the production. That is, in case both tablets and capsules, in both cases, or when we are manufacturing capsules and tablets, we the border mass is filled based on volume of particles. Variation in particle size may change the field volume, resulting in variation of tablets. Now, bioavailability of drugs. Smaller the particle size, greater the, bio, the, the rate of distribution, greater the rate of absorption, and greater the rate of availability of drugs in, in the blood. Number three is the physical property of physical state of suspension. Smaller the particle size, lesser will be the sedimentation rate of insoluble particles and ends increase uniform dose with withdrawal will be greater. So smaller the particle size, lesser will be the sedimentation rate and insoluble particles and chances of withdrawing a uniform rate dose will be greater and vice versa is true. Greatness in topical preparation. Greatness refers to that feeling that comes or either roughness or smoothness or the, that ease of applying a topical ointment or gel or whatever you're applying on the skin or a cream. So greater the particle size may result into greatness or roughness or that feeling of being scarred. Now, particle size analysis. Particle size analysis could be, you can either analyze your particles as a symmetrical or irregular or regular and while we are doing the particle size analysis, we come in consideration of borders where borders do not have a definite shape because we assume as they are spherical, but they are not that perfect sphere that can we can make us conclude that yeah, the shape of these borders are shape. And the more we reduce to a single unit or a smaller unit, the more it loses its shape. And therefore, we come to determine the equivalent diameter, and thereafter we shall determine the equivalent size of every border. Now, there are several methods of determining the determining the particle size before we analyze. So we have to determine an individual particle size, and thereafter we analyze more than one. Now. In microbiotics, there are methods of determining the particle size, which includes the microscopy method, sedimentation method, sieving method, electrical screen sensing method, which is also known as polders counter, laser diffraction, light scattering method. Now, these are just methods on which we can use to determine the particle size of a border. Now, microscopic method is just by use of a microscope. Borders are not that perfect, spherical. So we just find an equivalent diameter. In microscopic, we have matrix diameter, which matrix diameter means it is the length code projected into two equal half. So you project and bisect the particle into two equal half. Well, the ferrets diameter is that diameter at which there is a distance between two parallel tension. So you formulate a distance between two parallel tensions. Now on the, on the that one, we have the projected, number three, we have the projected area diameter, which is most commonly used and it is, it is not dependent upon the orientation of the particle as the first two. Now, uh, this diameter is based on a circle of an circle of area equivalent to that of the projected image of a particle. So you just take a projected 
an equivalent, you take a circle of area equivalent to that of a projected image of particle. That is the projected area diameter. Perimeter diameter is based on a cycle having the same perimeter as that of projected particle. Now, advantages of optical microscopy includes that the fact that it is simple and does not require a great number of apparatus. It just needs a microscope and you will be able to view. The particle shape also can be determined easily by visualizing it. It contamination and acclimation of particles can be detected. When there is impurities or there's some particles which are foreign, by this method, you can see and detect them and know if your substance is pure or contaminated. It is simple to count the number of particles present. And also, it can be used to measure very tiny particles, whereas the disadvantage is that optical, mi optical microscopy is time-consuming method. It is not possible to test ultra-fine particles also, the depth of particles cannot be determined. It cannot, it just gives 2D dimension of the particle. The orientation of particles may affect the accuracy of the result. Now we move to sedimentation method. Sedimentation means settling down and the opposite of it is known as elytration. It's the movement of particles upwards the fluid. Now, fluid flow pattern and Reynolds number. So we know that this affects the rate of sedimentation and Reynolds, number, Reynolds and the flu, fluid flow in, influence the rate of sedimentation. So we have the laminar flow, transitional and tabular. So in sedimentation, we use the Anderson pipette, which is constructed with a three tap system on top. Uh, it has a procedure, it has a working principle, but it shall be reflected on a separate video. Stroke law. Stroke law is just a symbol, a law in which it is only applied for particles which are spherical or dilute suspension. It's not for fine particle or because of the chronic. The stroke law of sedimentation states that stroke velocity is equal to the height of sedimentation or the sedimentation time, which can either be, which can further be derived in diameter is equal to the square root of 18 multiplied by viscosity multiplied by height divided by the density of, fluid of solid minus the density of fluid multiplied by the gravitational force times the time of sedimentation. Now, the parameters that change here is the height and the time of sedimentation. Now, advantages of this method is it is low cost and simple. Continuous operation without disturbance can be possible. It returns inaccurate and repro reproducible data. So it is relatively broad. The disadvantages is maintaining the temperature constant is not possible. It's also time consuming. It cannot determine the sedimentation rate of fine particle. Now, sifting method or the sifting. A sieve is a perforated screen containing both square or spherical. Now, sieve can be classified according to the basis of their sieve numbers or the mesh numbers. Sieves can be made of iron, coated iron, copper, st stainless steel, brass, the sieves made of stainless steel, which this one is commonly used in pharmaceutical companies and industries. Now, sieves can be used in particle size separation and particle size determination because several sieves have, have specific mesh numbers, and these mesh numbers have specific dimensions. So, from this dimension, you understand that the set the particles which move below the sieves means they are smaller than the sieve aperture, while those which are retained means they are larger than the sieve aperture. So from this, we can easily identify the size of the boulder. Now, on the other side, we say that the flowability of substance can be identified using the shear cell and the orifice. Now, on the shear cell, it is a device testing how boulder particle mixture flow. 
while on the orifice it is just an opening with an opening particularly one in the object through which the material can flow evenly so border flow through an orifice this method can be used for cohesive borders flow determination is generally by the mass flowing now this is an illustration of the uh, flow through the orifice shear cell method is illustrated on the other side where we have the shear stress and the normal stress now from this we introduce the borders and the bulk borders bulk solid and from this we introduce the forces now from this it is mainly used for adhesive and cohesive forces now there are important factors about sieving that we forgot to mention that is when calculating the when first of all in a pharmaceutical company when you are doing sieving or safety you arrange your 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 sieves up to 11 11 sieves are used in a, a standard by the as by a required by the USP. now from these 11 sieves you are going to arrange from that with the lowest mesh number to that which has the highest mesh number mesh number refers to the number of apertures a sieve contain and apertures refers to holes or pores of the sieves and on the mesh numbers mesh numbers are formed by mesh wires mesh wires refers to those wires which interlock each other to form the apertures now and to find and determine if a sieve for example if a sieve contain four mesh number it means it has five wires so it means once you know the mesh number you say plus one so as to get the mesh wires forming the sieve now from the arrangement of these sieves we say that during the vertical size analysis you are going to use these sieves when you arrange them in different in several uh, order you know about their mesh number and their sieve size that is the size of the pore or sieve aperture and from there you are going to determine the mass retained and from the mass retained you are going to determine the percentage mass retained which is the mass retained divided by the total, the total mass times 100 and from that you can easily find that cumulative offer size and under size which the offer size are those which are retained while the undersize are those which pass through and that is why we have that table and from that you can easily plot the graph with the histogram and the mode frequency and from there you also have a semi log graph now from this uh, data you are going to find this type of graph which we say the semi log graph histogram so histogram is plot, plotted between the particle size versus the mass retained that is sieve aperture size and then you have the percentage frequency of the mass retained and on the same look it is the particle size versus cumulative oversize and undersize and on the probability graph is plotted between the particle size versus cumulative or oversize and undersize. Now, on electrical sensing, or oh, this is a method of catch of particles on a line or a stream of electro electrons which are flowing. So, from this sensing, the particles can be determined, the size of the particles and the shape can be easily detected by the counter counter method now particle passing through measuring aperture of electrical sensing zone apparatus are easily determined by their shapes now interface and interfacial tension interface refers to a boundary between two invisible liquids which an interfacial tension is that tension of between the molecules at the interface surfactants here and the surfactants have been covered on our, one of our videos so in case you've not watched make sure you revisit it after of solubilization 
co-solvents here. And true solution now, informal solubilization means a process by which water insoluble or partially soluble substances are brought into aqua solution by forming a missile, which is known as a process of solubilization. So in pharmacy, solubilization is a process by which water insoluble or partially soluble substances are brought into aqua solution by forming a missile. Now, co-solvency is that relationship by which, by which organic compounds are solubilized in aqueous medium using two or more nonbonds. 